Action Station, 1370 WOCA. All right, six minutes after 11 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this beautiful Thursday morning. Robin, I'm going to tell you about one of my... I don't know if this is a male fantasy or I don't know if I'm confessing something here or expressing a little bit of fear. I don't know what I'm going to do here, but I had a dream. Let me just tell you this dream. I, I think it is kind of a fantasy that's trying to work its way. Boy, that guy's loud up there, huh? All right, all right, so here's, here's my fantasy or this dream. I, in my dream, I'm in a World War II airplane. Yes. World War II airplane. And okay. it is being piloted by a beautiful woman. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. And I'm sitting there wondering, I wonder why I'm here. I look over at her and she's she's singing. I mean, she's beautiful singing. She sings as beautiful as she looks. And she is like a, you know, I don't know much about opera, but I think she said she was a lyric mezzo-soprano. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm embarrassing her right now because she's in the room. Lori Arnold is here, and there is going to be a show over at the St. Paul's United Methodist Church Community uh, concert, I guess we would say, featuring Lori Arnold. And indeed, she is a pilot, and I'm, I hope I have this information right. <laughs> It'd be crazy if a taxi driver. I know. <laughs> Uh, John Leshek has been with us before. He's also a minister of music. He, his name is synonymous with music in our community. Has uh, been a teacher, an instructor, I guess a professor, you would say, of, yeah. of music for so many kids. Every year when we ho hosted uh, the broadcast of the Christmas parade, Robin would get all excited when she could see John Leshek in the parade, and he was always there. That's he right, is from the, Lake Weir. The minister of music at St. Paul's United Methodist Church, and Reverend Robert Roseberry is here also the pastor of St. Paul's United Methodist Church. So John Leshack, Reverend Robert Roseberry, and Lori Arnold, good to see all three of you. Good to be here. Uh, thank really you for coming in. Thank you. This is awesome. You, you're going to be singing. You really fly airplanes, huh? Yeah, I do. I do. I do. What, what, when we say airplane, what, what kind of, do you own a World War II airplane? We did. We did. We? Who's we? Uh, my husband and I. Oh, man. Yeah. Now, why did I have to? There that I wasn't know. in my no. dream. Do you know, I got to tell you, do you know how I met him? <laughs> Now, see, I have an older brother who always, he said, if you want to hang out with me, you need to know what's cool and what's not. Late 60s horsepower and World War II warbirds, that's cool. And so I was always at the air shows I'm so watching. a nerd. I don't know any of that stuff. So, okay. So uh, I, I ended up in Sedona, Arizona, and I watched one of these World War II airplanes take off. And when he came back, I chased this man down the runway yelling, hey, mister, hey, hey, I want to ride in that airplane. I really do. He said no. But I found where he worked, and I kept asking, and he finally said yes, and that was that was it. Oh uh, man! Was Twelve years I ago. I wish that would happen to me. Oh wow. my gosh! You're chasing a guy is like, okay, Mister. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, Mister, come here. here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the luckiest girl in the world. So yes, yes, we air showed all over the country with a with a North American AT6, it, taught formation, and did a lot of air shows. And, and do uh, you live here in Ocala? Yes, I do. Yeah. Okay, and, and do you land your airplane at, at Ocala Airport? Uh, no, actually, no, it's no. A, we live at a at an airpark. So. Oh, you live with Travolta? No. No. Okay. No. No. We're with more with the the normal folks. <laughs> we're with the normal who folks. Else, who else so. has a, <laughs> yeah. Who yeah. else? Who else has a pilot thing in there? I mean, a, what do you call them? Landing strip. Who else has one? Oh, uh, airpark. They're everywhere. They're all over Florida. I'm <laughs> serious. I'm going to go back on Google Earth. Place. John, did <laughs> you know this? Communities. Oh, I knew Lori did this, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the, big, the big band I play with, uh, I think this is, well, we met Lori when she was coming to St. Paul's, our pastor, officiated, our former pastor, right. uh, officiated at her wedding, and the big band I also play piano in, Southern Express, um, Lori invited our band to play at her uh, wedding reception. Oh, Really? And um, it was at an air ranch. At, sorry, and uh, it was a lot of fun there. And she had two uh, a navy. Oh, we had, yeah, we had two T sixes parked out there. It How about rained. That? I was supposed to have an it's entire aisle of two warbirds, T6s. and you know, oh, oh wow. it, yeah. I'd be lucky to identify anyway. a Mustang on the highway. <laughs> And you know a two T six? I don't even know what that is. I think her, think her wedding plans were to fly in. They were, and then jump off in her wedding gown and get married right then and there in the spot. But it was a rainy day. Oh. But it rained. We had about a four hundred foot ceiling, and so. So <laughs> your husband far. taught you how to fly? No, actually, I, I did learn. He he's actually taught me so much. But um, I actually flew with a different instructor. So. Okay, but did yes. you teach him how to sing? 
No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. He's not bad. He's not bad. But really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. He's okay. a take me out to the ball game kind of singer. <laughs> We are, we are not intentionally leaving out Reverend Robert Roseberry, uh, so le let me ask you, how did this come together for the church? I mean, this, this sounds like an awesome opportunity for the rest of us to visit your church. Gee, that's kind of funny you mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just enjoying the story. I didn't feel left out at all. But the uh, yeah, we, uh, when I came in in July. Uh, our, the former pastor retired. It's a good friend of mine. And I came in in July, and uh, John had this idea. They had already, uh, Laurie had already, uh, Laurie already sang for, Pastor Bob's farewell, and uh, they kind of had her on the radar. And John said, "Hey, why don't we have her sing in September? It would, you know, help help you get involved and help you know uh, the church kind of get involved in the community and right, everything." Right, right. And so I said, "Sure, if you think it's a great idea." And I I just met her right. last Sunday finally, and uh, she sang at church uh, during our worship service. And uh, so I've just been kind of riding the wave. I can't take much credit for it. Oh, wow, that's, <laughs> that's been John. He's, he's helped out a lot. And, and God gets all the credit, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, he yeah, gives yeah, the yeah, gifts, yeah, yeah. and then yeah. we just have to use them. Let, let me, let's see. Where do I want to take this to? Um, I knew a rock band one time. John, I'm going to address this question to you. And they were thinking about having a female singer join the group. And she was beautiful, and she sang wonderful. And I said, the only problem is you guys are going to become invisible. Doesn't that happen to your band? When she sings, don't you guys just disappear? <laughs> don't we, the, the viewer, the listener, the audience, don't we say, what? A band? Where? <laughs> well, <laughs> does that matter? Well, <laughs> it really doesn't matter. <laughs> One of the things that I'm just so excited about hearing Lori sing this is selfish on my part. I, uh -huh. I shared this with her on the way here that uh, I'm looking forward to learning from her sing as a performer uh -huh, because uh -huh. she sings with such passion and uh, I invited Lori to give clinics to the secondary schools, the high schools, vocal programs, and the middle school. We just came from Howard Middle School this morning, an hour ago. Wow, uh, she nice. gave a clinic to their their kids from 9:30 to 10:30. Did you play piano when she sang? No, no, she was she did. It was her gig, but nevertheless, she shared with the kids how important it is to sing from your heart and think about each song and just make it. Don't just sing the words, tell the story for each song. Oh, and think wow. about each song. And I'm just so proud of her for sharing that with future singers right, in the community, right. these young teenagers who are thinking about a possible career in singing. And it was just a win win situation this past week. And, and she's already been to Trinity Catholic. I uh, gave a presentation there to Lakewood High kids, vocal kids there. Mm -hmm. And uh, tomorrow she's doing one at uh, Westport for their vocal program there. Oh, nice. And those kids are so looking forward to hearing a professional singer talk about the do's and don'ts right. and what motivates you to, to take that energy there and to put on a show. Wow. And, so. and Laurie, can I ask you, I guess, some rudimentary questions. What is a lyric mezzo-soprano? What does that actually mean? Ah, uh, okay. Well, the soprano sings the highest notes. And a mezzo sings more in the middle of the range. Um, there are mezzo sopranos who can sing as high as a soprano does, but what makes a mezzo soprano is that her voice shines when she sings lower. The, the brilliance of the voice really? is um, it really is highlighted more in the middle of her range. Whereas a soprano, the higher she sings, the more brilliant it gets. Do I have to listen so. to opera to be familiar with an, uh, that singing style? In other words, if I said like Diana Krall, uh -huh. is she, I guess she's considered more jazz, right? Yes. But is she, the, do you name those kind of singers the same way? Do you say mezzo, is she a mezzo soprano or something? You, you, she, she would be a mezzo soprano. You know, in the choir world or out, they would call her an alto. So, okay. alto, mezzo soprano, six of one, half dozen of the other. And do you, does the, your title change as you get older? Does your voice change? Like when you were a little girl, were you a different title? You know, I sounded about the same. <laughs> you know, really? I, the funny thing is, I, I think the first time I sang, I was singing Karen Carpenter songs on a bus to a, a oh, bus wow. of captive kids. They couldn't mm -hmm. get off until their stop, you know? But I always had. Uh, you were you know, singing to bus children? What now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, were you a child on the bus too? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, school bus. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, okay. I was, I was a little kid, so yeah. They'd you were a child throw. singing to the other children? Yeah. What the heck? That's cool. You know you're a singer. When you're born a singer, you just. You and did they all shut up? They actually, they listened. Did they, did they ever request 100 <laughs> bottles of beer on the wall? No, no. <laughs> but I'll tell you, all those young years were tough because I would be singing in my bedroom and my brother would walk by and say, shut up! 
Oh, you no. suck. Oh. <laughs> you suck. Shut oh, up. Oh, that's not good. That's not good <laughs> for It took the... years to get over that. But, you know, I that's. Bet. I mean, it's an older brother. It's his job, did, right? No, you didn't believe it, though, I hope. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, part you did. Of you does, certainly. Oh, man. You know, did you, so, harder. who told you you didn't suck? Who told you that you were great? Oh. How did you know? I, uh, well. You know, I, trial and error. Just keep showing up. So I, yeah, you get compliments along the way. Now, but the, the thing John said about your ability to express mm-hmm. the emotion that is associated with the song. I, I've seen in instrumentalists. Mm-hmm. Some some do it, some don't do it. Mm-hmm. Some just play notes, others play songs. It's, mm-hmm. it's interesting how one, do, and singers do the same thing. I've heard singers just kind of, kind of, I don't know. Well, like. How to explain Lori, it even. Lori mentioned this this morning in her clinic and her, this, this past week to the students about presenting the, the music. And uh, I emailed some of my friends inviting them to the concert. And I said, she's one of these type of musicians that doesn't just sing the notes. She, you feel the music. And uh, the first time she sang at uh, St. Paul's, at, uh, for example, our previous pastor's farewell uh, reception thing mm. i watched the the folks in the in the audience uh and laurie sang a song called my tribute uh, you know you're, sing, you're singing everything you do it's for the glory of god and you owe it all to god but the point is is i was watching the folks and they just started having tears in their eyes but it was happy tears that everyone had, i get it yeah i get what you're saying you know what yeah. i'm saying yeah and that's that's the big ticket there because uh, I've had a real fine compliment shared with me from an attorney. He said, you know, John, when you play the organ or the piano, I don't hear the notes or the hymn. I feel it. Yeah, man. That's true. And yeah. it was All just these years, such it's a, true. I felt so humbled by that compliment. Mm-hmm. And Lori, when she sings, I just feel that. And, and that is probably always true. I mean, with anybody, even even those that rise to the top that we often make fun of, there's a reason they rose to the top, usually. Absolutely. I mean, there's sometimes maybe there's some exceptions. Yeah. But. Uh, you must be, are, 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 are you nervous? Because I know you've play, you, you play for, quote unquote, ordinary folks, but then you've also played for the Pope. Do you the feel Pope. the same yes. anxiety for ordinary folks as you did for him? You know. Oh, wow. The stage fright never really goes away. I wish I could say that it did. But as a singer, you're bearing your soul to people. Um, you're the only one with the voice that you have. No one else in the world has exactly the same timber. No one else has the same experiences that you emote with. Um, and when you sing, when it's really good, you're giving from your heart. And when you allow people to see that part of you, it's that little squishy part of yourself <laughs> right, that you, right, right. you can't hide that. And when people, when you let people have that, um, you're in a vulnerable position. And so there is a bit of stage fright whenever you walk out because you're giving yourself to them when you walk out. So yeah, you know, I've been doing it for many, many years. Does the stage fright ever go away? Not really, not really. <laughs> I wish it did. It's the bane of my existence, but, um, but it's worth it. It's worth it. After the first few songs, it's worth it. So. Wow. I, I want to uh, go back to uh, Reverend Robert Roseberry. I want to ask you about composers and about liturgical music. Am I saying it right? Music that's used in church? Oh, and sure. I don't know much yeah. about it, but I'm just going to tell you this. Sometimes okay. I'm at church, uh, okay. and I'll look at the bottom of the hymnal to see who wrote the song. You know, mm-hmm. And I'm, sometimes I'm amazed that it wasn't that long ago. Yeah. And, and then other times it's a long time ago. And almost every single time when it's really one of those songs that really... I'm saying, oh man, I like this song. Who wrote this one? It's a name I know, like a Beethoven or a Bach. So, and I'm not a classical, I don't know much about this stuff. All I know is like, oh wow, no wonder this guy's a household name. Look at how beautiful the song sounds. Do, do um, the, the personal lives of the composers often seem like they're like these crazy guys, like the Amadeus movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's artists and, do kind of get. And their music ends up like in that, church. Yeah. Their music ends up in church. <laughs> <laughs> well, there there are very um, you know uh, holy musicians too. I guess I mean some of them, a lot of them are stable. Uh, but <laughs> they just don't they just don't make the headlines uh, as much. <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, I mean Gershwin, uh, Dorsey, they they have hymns in our hymnal as well. Amy Grant, um, you know that 
it really it, it depends on kind of like Laurie was saying where the heart is in the music and if the heart is there if it's you know Amazing Grace that was written 250 years ago that still is a song well known right, right. Um, and, and just people feel the heart in that song um, you know it's going to stick around and it's going to be good and it'll be something that people love and, and Christians love and is a really good uh, life-giving song and that's that should be celebrated. Now you, you mentioned what a mezzo-soprano was, the word lyric at the beginning of it, mm-hmm. does that simply mean you're singing words? Is that what that means? Well it means that my style is um, th- is more is more lyrical for lack of better words there are different types of sopranos and mezzo sopranos coloratura um, would mean somebody who sings many notes in very quick succession yeah da 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 but um, someone who's really has a lot of agility I'm just kind of that middle of the road sing the beautiful line bel really? canto uh, to the smoky. Best of, do you are you smoky when you sing? <laughs> it depends on the song. Smoky. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm singing jazz, absolutely. I love that Diana Krall sound. Uh-huh. And that's really where I started singing was jazz. I started singing Ella Fitzgerald because no one would transpose for me and I didn't know how in high school. And I could sing in that range. And so I started oh. singing the big band music mm-hmm. and I loved it. Isn't it's, that great when you discover... Um, Robin and I are like on the bottom of the totem pole when it comes to music. We play folk guitar and... We play nursing homes, okay? So, so that, well, that's more so, than me. So, I don't play the guitar. So, so, but anyway, but anyway, so we were playing, you know, our music, for, you know, like Beatles and Eagles, whatever it was, until Love we it. got older and we realized, hey, the people in the nursing homes don't want to hear that. They want to hear the stuff from the '40s. Yeah. All of a sudden, we were exposed to these beautiful chord progressions and this more intricate. I don't know how what the difference is. Why we have lost that. But the music that we grew up with, we're 58. Well, she just turned 59. So. Right. <laughs> but, but so that just to give you an idea where we come from, and then to go back to our parents' music, which was the 40s, and realize, wow, we missed out on a lot because there's something about those melodies and the chord progressions. I, I know John is real familiar with what I'm talking about. Um, can, can I say something about Diana Krall real quickly? Oh, yeah. And I thought the same thing about Carly Simon, by the way. I used to, I loved both of them. And I, I often thought, I wonder if I like them because they're so pretty. The, if, the other day I was listening to Diana Crow without seeing her. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize it was her. Rob and I were together. So I said, wow, that, that's really good. Who is that? And then suddenly I realized I really do like her singing. That mm-hmm. it wasn't just me reacting to the way she looks. Mm-hmm. If you know what I mean. Yep. Us guys know what I mean, right? <laughs> She's one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, you look at a, a Keith Urban. This is a good-looking guy, right? Do, do yeah. you like his singing? Who? <laughs> yeah. Keith, no, that's bad. Oh, Keith Urban. Yeah. Oh, you know, actually, I actually heard something he did the other day, and you know, I just kind of appreciate the quality of his voice for what it is. Definite tenor. Um, Women are the best singers, though. There's no. You can't old. compare anything. Whenever, like, whenever you have a male-female duo or duet. And like the guy starts singing first, and then here comes Linda Ronstadt. Go, oh, forget, just drop the other guy. Just t- lower his part. It's, it doesn't need to be. You don't bring me flowers anymore. Remember that Neil Diamond? Yeah. Barbara, forget Neil. Just get rid of him. Oh well, she was Barbara Streisand. I mean, yeah. Barbara is Barbara. Yeah, but it's every every time there's a male female duo. Did you have you ever heard one where you said, "Oh, get rid of her." <laughs> You never hear that. No. It's so, I sure hope I don't. Oh, my. <laughs> How do you choose your repertoire? Because you performed at the Sydney Opera House. Yes. You performed for Pope Benedict, and now you're performing for the people in our community. How do you Robin's choose doing her job repertoire? better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> She's actually promoting the show. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I want to sing something for everyone. And, you know, I really started singing country when I was young on the little cow towns of Washington State, and then, of course, into jazz, um, and then into opera. And to, to listen to an hour of somebody singing the same genre of music gets kind of old. And by golly, I sure don't want people to get bored mm-hmm. watching. So I want to sing everything. There will be something for everyone. I mean, even from, I sing better bluegrass now that I've studied opera. I can actually shove the sound into my nose a little more. Really? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, doing singing different styles of music is like, um, it's like a completely different instrument. I can, it's like putting down the trumpet and picking up a saxophone. I can sing in, in different ways, and I'm, I'm blessed. Your voice is God's mm-hmm. gift to us as, as far as a, it's a musical instrument. I mean, yes. and it's not, it's not, I don't know, it's, it's a musical instrument. I don't know how else Absolutely. to say it. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, Laurie 
demonstrated this this morning in this past week with these different clinics she's been giving to this, the high school and middle school students about directing the sound you know, from the chest voice to the head voice and directing it uh, for the, to sing country and directing it toward the nasal cavity and you can hear her doing that and the kids say, oh yeah I can oh, that was just impressive and, and, you could, and the kids were getting it right and right, it's, right they were and as far as uh, the repertoire for the concert this Sunday there is a nice mix of a variety of different styles of music, a little a few, a country tune or two, and uh, some little gospel, uh, some Broadway, some definite jazz standards, and even one opera little spiel there. And um, what's interesting to me was Lori started off her presentation talking about the chess voice and singing a little bit of uh, about eight bars of a, uh, a, a, a jazz standard. And the kids, yeah, that's you have a nice voice. And then she talked about how opera, back then, they, they didn't have TV. The, the operas were their TV. This was their, their, their way of relating to what life is really like. You right, have all right. these um, romances and, right. and cheating and whatever and some bad people and some good people and the heroines and all that sort of stuff. And it was the opera. That's the way they told their story. Right, right, right. Anyway, uh, Laurie demonstrated changing her chest voice to a head voice and then she opened up with this little spiel of uh, from Carmen and the kids went wow that was cool oh I wish I could <laughs> have is, been there it is neat it is neat to uh-huh. sing were you acapella when you did that oh uh, no I just had a I just brought a CD but it, it is really neat you know when I was in school there weren't nobody ever came in and sang opera i thought opera that was just you know a very large woman wearing horns and uptight yeah, right. people <laughs> listen to it right i had we no a, idea i'm a very large man wearing horns <laughs> you should be here it's you do it very well though <laughs> yes 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 but the when you hear somebody actually use the 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 cavities the nasal cavities the throat the bones and the mask of their face to amplify sound it's a totally different sound and i was you know going into the schools i was a little afraid i would open up into this big resonance which uses less breath um, and less effort and they would just you know they'd curl up in a ball and want to leave and actually it was the opposite i used Oh, you use that big ex- expanded sound wow. and I sing about three notes and they their eyes bug out like that <laughs> how did you do that you yeah. know because all of a sudden you have this big expanded sound and and it was really neat because I was never exposed to it live right in front of you I I just wrote opera off completely I thought, oh, oh that's, man I that's gotta not hear me. that now it's ex- like like right now I don't know how that mic could handle it it's kind of loud <laughs> I'm dying too to hear, but I don't want. No, I don't want to do that to you because. But I'm dying to hear it too. Yeah. Well, come yeah. three o'clock on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Is an airplane ride in there? Is there an airplane ride? In there. Oh, <laughs> I, was just at I had to you. say it again. I had to say it again. It's a beautiful church, but it's not quite that big. Yeah, we don't have a hangar. All right, Robin was doing our job better than I was today. I guess I was infatuated a little bit, Lori. Uh, Lori Arnold is heart. going to be performing. <laughs> she performed for Pope Benedict at the Vatican. Yes. Did he applaud? You know, I, can I? Do I have time to tell a little story? Yes. I want okay. To, you, okay. Of course. So I'm sitting with a group of people. Right. And we're we're in St. Peter's Basilica, which is unbelievable and you know he's coming right and to the left of me there's a whole sea I don't know if they were monks or who they were but men in white <laughs> they're all in white robes right and I'm thinking oh my god the Pope is coming I, I really want to get my cell phone out and get some video of this but is that sacrilegious can I do yeah, really? that I mean really, really? and yeah. people around me were getting their phones out I thought oh I ah. kind of want to do this but I'm not sure and way off in the distance you can see him coming here comes a little pointy hat that's all I can see is the bobbing of the little pointy hat as he gets closer and to my left this entire sea of men in white robes leaps to their feet with iPads and phones and wow. I mean all of them they were on oh, their chairs you know what I was so, so I mean, you I, you I, you yeah, yeah I stuck my little iPhone up in the middle and you got tried a to get a little video oh, wow. oh yes oh yes the cathedrals there are unbelievable. Of course, there isn't really, you know, uh, in many of them, like St. Mary Major, there's not, there isn't a sound system there. But the acoustics are so pure. If you open your mouth, you can, it just, those domed ceilings, the sound just carries. You can be in the back row and it sounds just as good as being in the front row. It's the really? engineering. So, is so incredible. In, in a cathedral like that, it actually sounds better 
in that room than it does in the bathroom. Whereas most of our- <laughs> Nothing sounds better than the shower. <laughs> Nothing sounds better than the shower. And actually, St. Peter's is so big that, I mean, of course, they use amplification there. It's, it's unbelievably, oh, they it's huge. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, wow, wow. Good for you. And you live here. Wow. Uh, we are in for a treat, Ocala. We have Lori Arnold going to perform. Uh, and this is at St. Pa- uh, Paul's United Methodist Church Community Concert, which is, that's not the name of the church, right? It's- St. Paul's so, United Methodist Church, right? Right, right. Community uh, concert. It's the community concert yeah. featuring Lori Arnold. It'll be this coming Sunday, right? Are my notes right, John? Uh, church is located uh, just off of 36th Avenue. Yeah, 4100 8th Street. Okay. Any landmarks you can mention? I know. I need the landmarks. Uh, Ward Highlands Elementary School. Ah, okay. Now I know where you are. Okay. Yeah, if you take a left there, if you're coming from the... On, going south on 36, take a left at 8th Street, go two blocks... Or if you're coming off of Mayor Camp on 36, All right. uh, take a right when you get to 8th Street. Robin will post this on Facebook. I'm sure you guys are already doing that, but we'll sp- spread it a oh, little yeah. bit more. Do you, do you, is there a ticket price? What, is there anything we need to know? F-R-E-E. F-R-E-E? <laughs> I can't pass well, well, that up. How are you going to put fuel in that plane? <laughs> well, we are, we are having a love offering. Right, right? We're a love, love offering. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. So whatever, you f- if you feel motivated to give generously, we're not going to stop you, but... Yeah, don't feel like that's you right. Have gas is expensive, you What's know. Your, you, yeah. <laughs> since, wait, since you've sang in, in many different venues, do you have a favorite? And, and maybe not because of the audience, in, in the case of the Pope, for example, but is there just acoustically a place that just was like, oh, wow, I love the way this place sounds? I think it was probably the cathedrals in it Rome. Was. Okay. It really was, yeah. Were they built for that very part? Is that why yes. they were built the way they Okay. Yes, yes. Because I don't know who can answer this, but I remember hearing one of these guys, Beethoven Bach, one of the guys would clap his hands before he'd perform and he would mm-hmm. or be, before he'd agreed to perform mm-hmm. and if he couldn't hear his uh the clap of his hands reverberating a certain amount of time he would say nope not gonna play here yeah did you ever hear that no no but maybe i've, maybe I made I've it been up. to the uh, st patrick's and i i know what you're yeah i didn't perform that i was here like a tourist like everyone else the new york st patrick's or is there a different one i mean i've been to new york st patrick's as well as the vatican mm-hmm. and it was Pretty fascinating. So on, never, the, on your bucket list, if you've never gone to the Vatican, it's something to oh do. Oh, my. That's unspeakable. I've always worried if I'd sneezed, would the Pope say, bless you? And <laughs> You'd hope. <laughs> you would hope, yeah. Yeah. And why you know, would you complain? Hurt. I mean, you know. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> will your concert be the whole time, or will you take a break, and what kind of attire will you be wearing? You know, I have it. That's one of those things, being a girl, you just got to feel away. You, you know, mm-hmm. in the morning, you know what you're going to wear. That's right. I'm not sure. I think I'm just going to sing a, pretty much. say with horns. Yeah. We yeah. have a pair of those. You have horns. We do. With, with we, do have, we do have it. <laughs> you can wear yeah. them if you want. Uh. I might need to. I might need to. Oh, my God. Crazy goodness. bunch around here. It we is. do have Look that. Out right here in Ocala. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Uh, John Leshack, you have always impressed me. I, uh, I'm, I'm always in love with your music, and uh, you always, Robin, always stand up. There he is, there's John. <laughs> <laughs> too, too kind. It's just. Are you doing the Christmas parade anymore? Or are you done with it? Am that? I what? What? Do, doing the Christmas parade anymore? Uh, I'm a enjoy sitting on the bench watching oh, the parade go by. After all these oh, well. years, I feel excited for the for the moment and the kids and everybody. Mm-hmm. And, but I do critique all the directors. I. I Tell them, hey, this is what it looked like from this perspective there. And I try to give them out of boys or out of girls. Yeah. And encourage oh, yeah, them right, right, right. And how important that event is. And, and I, again, I want to uh, thank Lori publicly for taking the time out of her schedule to share what she knows and, and be an inspiration for these young adults. Yeah, yeah. Because you never know, you may be that spark that keeps a kid in school and keeps them focused and to try harder oh, to, man. to succeed. So I'm going to slip in something so that I could ask uh, Robert a question real quickly. Uh, I used to be activities director at an assisted living facility, and I used okay. to hire musicians to come in. Mm-hmm. And I had lots and lots of them who wanted to come in. And you know, I based my decision on the price. It was always a part of it. They would always have this list of credentials. I've played with Elvis or something like that. You know, <laughs> they, they always had that on there. Everybody played with Elvis. Elvis yeah. or, or somebody. Uh, name dropping was always an important part for me. Uh, but I'm guessing at this point, I'm guessing you have the same thing, first of all. I'm guessing a lot of Christian entertainers uh, send you postcards or, or send you emails saying, hey, can I sing at your church? Can I play at your church? Yeah, we get those. Yeah, yeah. You, you have you have the, the standard right now. You're not, this, this, she, she ups the bar. What do you say? 
she changes everything. That's oh yeah, right. this is great. I get to tell it. No, you got to do better. Yeah, you got to be at least. You be at least. We, 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 we've had somebody who's who's gone to the Vatican. I'm you got to be at least as no. good. At least as good as Lori Arnold, right? Yeah, I'll just play him a, a you know recording of it and say, "Can you do this?" Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I, oh, and I like the no, face. No, no, no. I like yeah, the face too. The face. Can you do this? <laughs> that was very actor-ish. Uh, Reverend Robert Roseberry, the pastor of the St. Paul's United Methodist Church. Thank you for coming in. Uh, thank you, Lori. You are fun. Hey. You are so fun. Um, Rock on. Yeah, you're gorgeous. Oh, bless your heart. It's you smoke are. and mirrors, Beautiful. really. No, it's not. <laughs> who, do you, who does she remind that me of? Not in hairspray. You, you know, she remind me of, uh, who's the lady who did the oh, Star Wars lady? Who's the Star Wars girl? Oh, Carrie Fisher. Yeah, you got sort of a Carrie really? Fisher do you know, way of yeah. speaking. My brother always said that I looked like, oh, no, I can't think of it. Remember? Nope, it's gone. Oh. It's gone. It was another one of those shows. It wasn't Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> now I'm dating myself. Yes. There you go. <laughs> well, at least somebody is. Uh, that's uh, okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well. Do you know him? He must know Do you guys know him. each other? Oh, okay. Hi. You should be in school, kid. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, okay. You graduated. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and you are an inspiration, John, to everybody. One of your former students and... He's graduated now because of you. Stay in school. Uh, You're always wonderful uh, with the kids. John Lachak, Reverend Robert Roseberry, Laurie Arnold. What a fun interview. Thank you for hey. coming in. Thank you yeah. for bringing your talents to Ocala. And uh, yeah. everybody thank else, go enjoy them. Thank you yeah. for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us. We will take a little break, and we'll be right back. Can I take Habitat for Humanity of Marion County is a ministry dedicated to improving lives by providing affordable and decent housing. Help them help others by visiting the Habitat for Humanity Ocala Home Store on Northwest 27th Avenue.